All right, guys, so when I say I'm doing upgrades, I really mean I'm doing upgrades. Check this out. <laughs> this order just arrived. Um, it's over a thousand bucks worth. I think it was about 1200 bucks from performance PCs. So I'm not going to go through what all of this stuff is, but you will certainly be seeing a lot of it in my rig pretty soon. So you can check it all out then, um, and I'll go over it. Some pretty awesome stuff here. This is a custom couple of switches, military switches. It's for the lighting in my case. Anyway, I better not go over every individual thing, or we'll certainly be here all night. So, pretty awesome. You're going to be seeing all this in the Singularity Beast, or most of it, pretty soon. I'm very big mess in here at the moment because I'm in the process of the second step of the upgrades. It looks very bare with all the cards out. Thank God for quick disconnects, eh? Look at that. Don't have to drain the whole system. You only have to drain a tiny little bit of it. Alright, so I'll be back when I've finished step two. Alright guys, this is Singularity Beast Upgrades Part 2 and the Gainwood GTX 580 Phantom 3 Gigabyte Editions are water-cooled and in the Singularity Beast. So in Part 1 I talked about the specifications of this system and I showed the graphics cards in the system when they were air-cooled and I also talked about what I was going to be doing in the future upgrade videos. So make sure you check out part one. I'll put a link up on the screen for it. And also make sure you check out my graphics card water block installation guide which I'll also put up a link for. Now that showed an intermediate stage of the Singularity Beast upgrades um, that I didn't want to list as these, you know, within this upgrade series uh, because I wanted to have a separate guide for installing a water block on a graphics card. Uh, so I made that a separate thing, but um, as part of these this upgrade series, you should really check it out to see me actually um, putting the water blocks on these cards. Okay, so I'll bring you in for a close look. I am actually um, testing these cards at the moment, uh, and they are severely, well, not, well, they're pretty far overclocked. Um, so they're under heavy load. You might be able to hear that high pitched whine. So, yeah, back with the EK serial link which I really like. You know, it might restrict a bit of flow, but it holds the graphics cards. You know, it keeps them nice and sturdy. There's certainly no flex, and the extra weight added by, pardon me, added by the water blocks um, isn't a problem with this serial link. It just holds them nice and tightly. You actually install the cards on the serial link before you put them in and then you push them all in at the same time even when you've got three video cards so I am going to be putting back plates on the cards as well that'll be in the next upgrade video when I've got the third card um, when I order my th third water block from EK I'm going to be ordering the nickel back plates as well I'm just waiting for them to come in stock though so as you can see I've used the nickel plexi water blocks I haven't put the LEDs in yet though so they're not lit up yet I'll be putting blue LEDs in behind them somewhere um, that'll also be in the next video alright so I've also installed the AX1200 as I said I would and my power problems have been solved so it was actually the Silverstone Strider. So yeah, I'm really loving this PSU. It's silent. It's quieter than the than the Strider. I had a Silverstone Strider 1500. I love the cables. I mean, look at that. I was going to sleeve these cables, but I see absolutely no need because 
Um, I'm one for hiding cables, not showing any cables at all, and if you sleeve them, it's kind of, you know, you kind of want to show off your sleeving, and it's all about getting the cables out and showing them off. Um, I just want my cables to be out of sight. So, very impressed with this Corsair power supply. Certainly makes my system look a lot better. I've got the cable hanging down there, ready for the third graphics card. That's why it looks a little bit messy. Okay, so another thing I'm going to be doing is changing this 6 gigabyte kit of Corsair Dominator GT to a 12 gigabyte kit. The 12 gigabyte kit is going to be um, 2000 megahertz. I'm just putting you back on the tripod now. And I'll show you some of the other upgrades that I'm doing in future videos. All the parts have arrived now so I can I can show you. I'm going to be putting this water block in the system, a new water block. It's the EK RAM Dominator water block and it's another nickel acetyl block. Um, so the RAM is going to be water cooled. I'll be adding it to the red loop, the CPU loop. Um, and that'll keep that division between red and blue that I have. It's just the way I've designed the system. One side is red, one side is blue and got that nice division down the middle where the two meet. Um, so that is going to stay and the this water block is going to be in the red loop. So what I'm really trying to do is kind of match up my water blocks a bit. Um, so the graphics cards and the RAM are nickel plexi. The CPU is going to be, I'm changing out, the one in there is copper plexi and I'll be putting in a full nickel block. Um, and I'm hoping that this will kind of match up with the nickel acetyl motherboard water block on my Rampage 3 Extreme uh, and also match the silver of the RAM block. So just my LEDs here all nicely sleeved and ready to go to put throughout the system. Um, and I've got a bits power LED station there that I'm going to be putting in and also this Um, it's custom built by, well not completely custom built, but there's a certain amount of customization you can do to this at performance PCs. You know, you can choose the colors of your switches and LEDs and a whole lot of things. So, a couple of military switches for my lighting. I know it's a bit over the top, but in future upgrades I might use these to control other more important things than lighting and that's why I went all out with them but you can see the ends of the switches themselves actually have a, a bright red LED in them so that'll shine through the um, transparent switches so that's pretty much everything for now um, yeah I put in that one, that new 140mm fan, but I haven't yet put in the new NMX Magma fans um, on the triple radiator. Leave that for a future video. Okay guys, idle temperatures. So GPU 1 is 39 degrees and GPU 2 is 39 as well. Room temperature is 28 degrees. I've been getting a lot of people saying uh, that my temperatures are bad on water cooling and that they get better temperatures than I do on air cooling and all that but they're not considering um, the ambient temperature um, Delta, it, deltas are what you've got to look at uh, you know not many people have a 30 to 35 degree room temperature like I do so that's absolutely definitely something that needs to be taken into consideration when um, talking temperatures. So this is 30 minutes of load at stock clocks. So GPU 1 is at 51 degrees, GPU 2 is at 58 degrees. So the room temperature is at the moment 30 degrees for this testing. Okay so I've been running folding at home for 30 minutes and the GP GPU 1 is at 55 degrees, GPU 2 is at 65 degrees. I will show you the overclock that I'm running. Okay, so 
if you compare the if you compare it to the overclock that I was running in the review that I did of these graphics cards um, I got up to 860 on the core and 2100 on the memory so it doesn't seem that far past that overclock but this is certainly not the limit of these cards okay I haven't pushed them all the way this is just a, a quick overclock that I've done in about half an hour um, you know I haven't really done much testing yet this is the first of the testing that I've done it takes a long time to to get a really good overclock and to find the limit of your hardware and I have not had long enough to do that yet so this is the overclock that I've reached for now but I just want you to know it's it's really not the limit of these cards under water cooling um, yeah it's just a pre preliminary overclock for me plus I don't want to push them too hard and you can't blame me I've spent a lot of money on these cards alright so 925 on the core and 2200 on the memory um, and I think it's pretty good that after 30 minutes yeah it's only reached 55 on GPU 1, 65 on GPU 2 and the room temperature is 30 degrees okay so I'm not going to run the whole range of benchmarks uh, like I would in a review I'm not going to do that until I'm I've got the third card installed and I'm running Tri-SLI GTX 580s then I'll go through the whole range of benchmarks again uh, and you can see all the performance results uh, and then you can compare them back to the review all I'm going to show you now is 3D Mark 11 and the only reason I'm showing you this is to show you the results of the overclock um, profile that I've showed you today. Okay, so here's the result 3D Mark 11 performance profile, um, and also stock clocks right there. So that's the increase that the overclock profile that I've shown you today has given me. So, something else that I forgot to mention was that I also put the Asus Sonar D2X um, back into the system so um, I couldn't put it in before because of the size of the water blocks I mean the size of the air coolers on the game of Phantoms um, they take up two and a half slots so the sound card is back in as you can see down there in the bottom slot so that's pretty much it. Um, the next video will be when I've finished everything off and put the third video card in and I'm running Tri-SLI and everything's all done. Uh, but I'll probably do um, a, a video between now and then because it's going to be a bit of a gap until I put that third card in because I have to wait for the back plates from EK and things like that. So that concludes part two thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the video uh, and please subscribe